couple things to remember when we're talking about accessibility uh, and the codes. One of them is the idea of a path. Uh, you can't have something that's accessible if you're not able to get to it. So if I have an accessible bathroom, there needs to be a clear accessible path that gets to that bathroom. If I have an accessible entrance, I have to have a clear accessible path that gets to the entrance and then into the building. So you have to think of it as a continuity of a, of a process. A couple of other elements, the 7-Eleven stair, a 7-inch riser, 11-inch tread, 7-inch being the maximum on the riser. Uh, that is the accessible stair size and uh, set of dimensions. Uh, and that comes from the idea that people with disabilities uh, walkers and people with broken legs and all those kinds of issues uh, f can easily do a seven inch riser but have a much harder time doing a seven and a half or eight inch riser. Just that little difference makes a big difference and so that's why it's considered the accessible stair. So you'll hear that term. It's also because it's the accessible stair, really any public building is going to be uh, held to a 7-Eleven stair. If you're doing a single family house or something like that, well, you have a few other options. Um, but anything that's a public space uh, is going to have that uh, accessible stair. And then when we start talking about uh, the kind of movement areas around doors and, and kind of the ability to get into a room and turn around, the ubiquitous five-foot circle. So this circle, you're probably all used to the idea of drawing a five-foot circle onto a plan so that you can see that somebody could, if they went into that space, could do a, a, a turnaround, a 180-degree turn, and then get back out. Uh, it's not a magic number. 60 inches is uh, just sort of a reason that most people, once they get used to uh, how to how to use a uh, wheelchair, can sort of figure out how to how to make that happen in, in 60 inches. But there'll be some folks that actually need more space than that, and some could do it in less. So 60 is just kind of like a reasonably good number that catches most people most of the time. Uh, the other big one, one that you may be uh, familiar with from the standpoint of the vignettes, uh, is uh, around a door. There's a lot of space needs around a door, and this is a really easy question to ask, so you can totally imagine getting questions on, on this. Uh, and that idea is, if I'm going to pull up uh, to a door in order to open it in a wheelchair, uh, I need some space around the door handle to be able to kind of get to it, to be able to hold on to it. And it's different on the pull side than it is on the push side. If I'm talking about kind of uh, pulling up, I'm gonna find that I'm gonna pull up kind of like that, grab the handle and then back up. As I back up, I'm opening the door and then I'm gonna go through the door. So I need that 18 inches on the door handle side, on the pull side. When I'm doing that same maneuver on the push side, I still need space, but I just don't need quite as much space. So the mandate is 12 inches. There are certain situations where you'll find that this actually on the pull side is actually 24 inches, but generally you're talking about an 18 inch uh, dimension. Uh, it's possible on the push side that it could be up to 18 inches, but 12 inches is sort of the typical. Uh, and the thinking on that is that you then have enough room that you can maneuver back and forth and all the things you need to do in order to get that door to actually start moving. Uh, you can imagine that a number of other issues are going to be that uh, if that's a really heavy door, how hard would it be to open that when you're in a wheelchair? So your, your wheelchair is rolling and it's hard to, you have to like lock in the wheelchair in order to get a, enough pull to be able to open that door. So uh, there are rules about how many PSI it takes, how much PSI it takes in order to pull open a door or to push open a door. Uh, and that's in order to make it sort of plausible, both for somebody in a wheelchair, but also elderly people or people in a walker that just don't have enough oomph to be able to kind of push something open. Uh, so if you're talking about making something accessible, not only is the door sort of important in terms of uh, how much space it has around it, but also in the actual physical opening of it. So this seems fairly simple and straightforward. This is something that just seems sort of obvious once you start to say it but it's very easy to kind of not notice the desk that comes in right in that corner or a wall that finds its way 16 inches off that door handle. Those are the kinds of things that you could easily imagine getting a question about where there's some situation, they show something, 
and that you need to be able to sort of recognize, oh wait, this is the pull side, that's supposed to be 18 inches. Um, I don't think they will ever make you memorize those numbers, uh, although I think they're probably good to remember. Uh, I think they would always give it to you, but you would need to be able to recognize the situation and know that it might be an issue. Uh, so there's a whole series of different ways, and we'll look at so, some of those in a minute, a whole series of different ways that as you move towards these doors in different directions, uh, that they have different dimensions. So it's never always the same. This is just sort of the main two that you end up dealing with, that push and pull side, um, but it is something that uh, you'll deal with over and over again in all these different uh, uh, directions. Another thing to say about the doors, uh, most everybody would realize that uh, if you're going to be talking about a, an accessible door, it's going to be a 36 inch door or bigger, but 36 is the standard. So we think about 36, but then we look down here and it says 32 minimum. You know, why aren't we using 32 inch doors if we're allowed to use 32 inch spaces for our accessibility? And the reasoning on that is if I have my door and it's part of a door frame that the door itself, if this is a 36 inch dimension, that because of the thickness of the door plus the stops, I start subtracting out of that 36 inches and what I'm effectively leaving instead is approximately 32 inches. So when you see that 32 inch, what that's referring to is I need a 36 inch door in order to get that 32 clear. So that's why those numbers are different because they're actually representing different ways of thinking about that same width of opening. So uh, doorways, turning radiuses, uh, the stairs, all of these things are things that we're trying to think about not just from sort of everyday use, kind of everybody uh, being able to sort of move through a space, but that it's universal use, that everybody can, can get through these doors and, and find that continuous path uh, to be able to get into the building, to get to all the important spaces, to be able to use the bathrooms and use the kitchens and uh, all those things. So uh, these are important numbers to know, important ideas to know, and we'll go through a few examples.